Johnny, let's talk about Fletch, baby, and uh, where he belongs in the lineup. And speaking of the lineup, where should Trout go and Otani? Should it go Trout, then Otani, or Otani, then Trout? We're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about who we need to keep an eye on this weekend against the Astros. John and I are going to give you two names. You're Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can give us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Helps people to find the show. And if you're watching on YouTube, hello, you can subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. We're so glad you decided to join us for this edition of Locked on Angels, where it's your team every day. Happy Friday from the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. We're lifelong fans of this team, and we love talking about our Halos, no matter how good or bad they're doing. And we're glad that you decided to join us and be part of the conversation. Of course, you can follow us at Locked on Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Giving you the best baseball and angels memes around. I truly, truly believe that because we uh, are memeing all the time, Michael, around here. You're, You're the just king a, of the meme, Johnny. King of the memes. <laughs> king of the you ring. You send them to me the and then you post them. And then sometimes you just post them and say, hey, go like that on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it goes. Hey, uh, because we have, uh, because it's Friday, we can call it Fletch Friday. How about that? Fletch We're going to talk about David Fletcher. Where is the best spot? It for David Fletcher in this lineup. Look, he has been out most of the season. He started yep. out the season not too great, and he was at the bottom of the lineup. Of course, Taylor Ward was leading off, and that was proving to be very successful. And as his power numbers started to go up, we kind of thought, hey, Taylor Ward might be a good cleanup hitter because he yeah. was seeing the ball, he was hitting the ball hard, and he was getting all kinds of RBIs from that leadoff spot. Then... David Fletcher went down with an injury, so they decided to keep Taylor Ward at the leadoff spot. But since David Fletcher has returned, he is no longer struggling because he is fully healthy. Uh, His hips are not bothering him anymore. It just goes to show that with Anthony Rendon and Mike Trout and Jared Walsh and David Fletcher, these guys that are going through injuries, it really affects their, their playing time, especially their hitting. I mean, look, David Fletcher is a wizard in the infield, but when it came to his bat, it really had fallen off from what we had seen in 2019 and 2020. And even the beginning of 2021, remember he had that huge hit streak last season. I do. Now David Fletcher is batting around 275, which is up from under 200 is where it started when he came back. So Mike, it really just goes to show that David Fletcher is an important part of this lineup. So where would you place him? If you were setting this order, this batting order, and you were Phil Nevin, and you weren't afraid to lose your job, probably like he will, uh, where (laughs) would you put David Fletcher in this lineup? I think I'm going to be really flexible with Fletcher for the next few. The the Fletchable with with Fletch. Because uh, for the next few games until the end of the season, I want to see where he can really thrive hmm. and then potentially for next year, have him in that spot. I know you and I've talked about how last year Fletch looked like he was maybe carrying the offense because playing out of his shoes, right? Like, yeah, we, his shoes we felt were too like big that. for his feet. <laughs> I think that a lot of that had to do with his injury and mm-hmm. we're seeing some of that come true with the way that he's hitting and playing defense right now. And so I think that Fletch could really slot in anywhere in the lineup, but I Mm. think that what you would want to do to avoid some of the things that we struggled with earlier this year, a lot of strikeouts, a lot of gaps in the lineup when Mm -hmm. we knew that, hey, Trout and Otani are going to get hits, but then there was going to be no hits for maybe the next couple innings because the middle of the lineup just wasn't coming through. Mm. Quite honestly, John, I would put Fletcher after Trout and Otani in the lineup simply because... Trout and Otani are going to get on base. And I think that what Fletch brings is a threat to make contact. Whether he gets a hit or not, I think Hmm. is irrelevant. He makes contact and he's going to move runners over. And so I'm going to put him in in a position where, let's say that the top three spots are taken. I'm actually thinking about putting him at number four or number five because 
he's going to be somebody that's going to make contact. And I would love to try him out there this season. I don't know if you have him there all the time, but I would love to try him out there simply because he doesn't strike out much. I think there was, there was this ridiculous stat. I don't know if you saw it where since like 2020 or even 2019, Fletch has seen over like 3,800 pitches and he swung and missed like, I think it was like 250. Like, I mean, it was mm-hmm. maybe it was lower than that, but it was just this outrageous, ridiculous amount of pitches that he has seen. And he's only swung and missed like a, just a small percentage of those. And I think that that actually is going to benefit this lineup in a significant way. And when you bring somebody like Anthony Rendon back, maybe you can reevaluate, but I'd love to see him slot in in one of those what you would call power slots because you really want to get Otani and Trout as many at bats as you possibly can. So they got to be one, two, or three. And so slot him in at four, slot him in at five, and let's see what happens. We have that opportunity to play around with it for the next 20, 30 games until the season's over. Where would you put him? You make an interesting point about his out of the zone strike rate and swing rate. Back, I think when you were on vacation, I answered some mailbag questions. And this is back. Do you remember when we had Jonathan VR on this team? Way I, back who, in July. Uh, wait, <laughs> that was like four seasons ago, right? <laughs> right. Uh, with with David Fletcher, oh man, his swinging out of the zone rate was three times less than Jonathan VR. I think wow. I think VR was somewhere in the 30 percentile. And, and Fletch was like 10 percentile. It was something Unreal. crazy like that because it just goes, it just says that Fletch doesn't chase. I like what you're, you're saying for the remainder of this season. Let's see how he slots in, in a runners in scoring position spot. Yeah. In a position where he can hit a sacrifice fly, which we see him do a lot. He, when he, when he elevates a pitch, uh, he can often pop out. Yeah. My only concern there is that he does not pop out very deep. And true. so that would That's kind true. of put the guys on first and second in a little bit of jeopardy uh, in terms of advancing the runner. I think David Fletcher, it's probably the obvious answer, Mike, but I think David Fletcher is your prototypical leadoff guy. He hmm. makes good contact. He'll take a walk. He doesn't strike out very often. And when he does make contact, I mean... Like I said, if he can bloop one in, but if it's just a little too much, he often pops out, and that's not a very productive out, as we've seen. Uh, but I, I, I just think that he's he's really great in front of Trout and Otani, or Otani and Trout. We'll talk about what order he'd put them in later. Yeah. But even at number nine, he was kind of the second leadoff guy. But I, I, I understand what you're saying. It would be interesting to see him in a position where he can hit runners in and have runners on base like Otani and Trout, who are good base runners. Right. Um, but then you have to consider what happens next year when Rendon is back and Walsh is back, and then who's your leadoff guy if not David Fletcher? Sure, maybe it, maybe it's Joe Adele, but he's got kind of a a, a strikeout in his in his uh, batting, and so that right. could be a problem too. Plus, he's got power, so you'd want to see him in a power position. So it it adds a wrinkle to when those guys come back. Sure. Here's why I like it because it stretches that lineup out, especially when those guys come back. So let's say, let's say it's Ward, it's Trout, it's Otani, Fletch, and then you've got Rendon or Walsh, probably Rendon, Mm -hmm. then Walsh, then Adele. John, I'm already at the seventh hitter and all of those bats are strong, right? And so that's why I like it. Plus Ward has shown to strike out a bit. And, and Fletch hasn't, but Ward has also shown to have a really good eye in the strike zone. Mm -hmm. And when he was leading off and he was healthy, that was when we were like all systems go. And so I think that what we really need is to stretch this lineup out a bit and potentially next year as well, because you have one through seven already that are really, really strong. And it just depends on what you do in eight and in nine. Well, and the eight and nine that are left over are catcher, and shortstop and Mm -hmm. if we go out and get a shortstop who is an offensive threat uh that person would certainly help out the middle of that order too sure and then of course who knows what's going to happen maybe it's matt dice maybe it's max stassi maybe it's even logan ohapi who also can hit very well this seems like a threatening lineup one through nine if we can stretch it out and piece it together well 
I'm I'm totally open to moving Fletcher around, especially when we don't really have much to play for this season. But I do think that he is really productive at the leadoff spot. But you're right. I would be interested to see what he could do from somewhere in the middle of the order. Well, coming up on the show, we're going to talk about the players that you should be watching this weekend, and we're going to tell you why we're watching them. We're going to give you two names to pay attention to. But first, Locked On Angels is brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Jonathan. Yes, sir. Hey, look, when you're out with some friends and you're having a good time and maybe even having a few drinks, sometimes a few drinks will become a few too many. And as the evening comes to an end, people are heading out. You say goodbye. You think of calling for a ride, but you decide against it. You think, I can make it home. It's not that far. But the truth is, everyone knows the risks of driving drunk. The results are often tragic and often deadly. However, that doesn't stop people from getting behind the wheel, even a little bit to a lot of it under the influence. No matter how much you've had that night, it's still very risky. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save Live. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, please think again, play it safe, plan ahead, and get a ride. You can get an Uber, a Lyft, call a friend, or a taxi cab. Any one of those things is a better option than trying to get behind the wheel of a car. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. So please drive sober or get pulled over. As we talk about the lineup, talking about Fletch, I also think it's really important for us to discuss this Trout Otani conundrum, which is really not a conundrum. It's great to have both of those bats in the lineup. So, Johnny, I'm going to throw this out to you, and I want your response, and then you can you can tell me why. You can give me your fan guided wisdom, or you can give me stats, or -hmm. you can just give me your what what's in your heart. Okay, Mm -hmm. so I'm looking at the lineup, and I'm reading the lineup. Is it Trout then Otani? Or should it be Otani, then Trout, hmm. as you look at the lineup? Where, mm-hmm. where are you going? Where are you leaning? For much of his career, Mike Trout has bat second. And he often did that in front of Albert Pujols. Because Albert Pujols was the power bat behind Mike Trout. And for a long time, even when Pujols was still productive, he was batting third in this batting order. And I think that you have a proven system with Trout batting second. So I really think putting Otani there third is a really wise move because I think that pitching to Trout is less dangerous than pitching to Otani because if you make a mistake to Otani, it's going out. He's going to crush it. And with Trout, I think he's more prone to, I mean, obviously Trout can hit home runs. Him and Otani are neck and neck for the team lead and home runs. Right. But I think Trout is more apt to get the base hit and get on base and get in front of somebody and sneak one through the gap or bloop one in or hit one into the, into the gap in the outfield. And with him in front of Otani and being on base, Otani has so many solo shots and, and solo home runs and things like that. You want people in front of him on base. So to me, Otani, Otani is the power hitter of yep. this of this lineup. He's the he's the guy that you wanted in Albert Pujols, who's hitting hitting stuff and and has a high OPS because he's hitting a ton of uh, doubles and home runs and things like that. And and that's what else is interesting about Otani is he stretches things from a double to a triple or a yeah, single to does. a double. And so if you have somebody in front of him then you can push that runner over as well. So to me, I think Trout and then Otani is the way to go. I think that, again, going back to the history of Mike Trout's career, through his career, he's been a great number two. There was a while there where I personally was like, put Trout at three, he's the best hitter on this team. And right, yeah. And I think yeah. for a while that was true. However, I really think that Mike Trout succeeds in the two hole. But what say you? I 100% agree with you. I think that Trout right. should bat Case second. Case no. <laughs> Right, right. I think Trout should bat second. I think that Otani should bat third. And and here's why. Trout, you want to get him as many at-bats as you can. Mm-hmm. And he's not going to be your leadoff hitter. We've already talked right. about like having Ward or Fletcher there. But having him at the top of the order gives him opportunity to knock in runs. He's going to get four at-bats at least. 
in a game. But then what I like about Otani is one, he's a left-handed bat and this mm-hmm. lineup can be right-handed dominant. It, it, and when Walsh is in there, it still can be pretty right-handed dominant. And so I like Otani at three because then you go righty, righty, lefty, mm-hmm. and then you have a righty behind him, depending on if it's Fletch or if it's Rendon or even somebody else that jumps in there. And then maybe you have a two two more right-handed bats, and then you put Walsh in there, depending on where and you the got Renhifo switch hitter. Best. And, and you do have Renhifo as well. So I really like him at number three. And the other reason why I like him there is because he can go to all fields. You can try to play him to pull. But he showed a couple nights ago where he hit a shot against the Yanks down the third base line and nobody yep. was there and he right. got a double. And, right. and to your point, he hustled that double. That was a mm-hmm. hustle double that wouldn't have happened if he wasn't paying attention. And right. the Yankees were kind of lackadaisical about that. The other thing I like about Otani is that you need your, your third hitter to come through. And he's the type of guy that if he just doesn't make great contact, you're still going to have to rush to try to get him out at first base because Mm -hmm. he's hustling down the line. Again, talking about the Yankee series, he was hustling down the line, hit a ground ball to Anthony Rizzo and the pitcher was kind of jogging over and he realized, Oh, (laughs) this guy's guy's fast. Yeah. Right. And so I, I really like Otani there. I think that he needs the RBI opportunity because he is going to knock in those runs. Plus we talked about sack flies with David Fletcher. I think Otani is uh, definitely a good guy to hit a sacrifice fly because oh, 100%. he's crushing that ball. And in the late innings, they're playing no doubles, and sometimes they're playing on close to the warning track. And so Otani has the opportunity to bloop something in. And if he does that with Mike Trout hitting ahead of him, Trout is a great base runner. He is wise on the base, base paths. And so I would love to see that lineup this year, but I would also love to see that next year. I think it's great protection for Trout. And I think that it's a great opportunity for Otani. And then when Rendon comes back and he's healthy, I think he's your number four or Fletch is your number four or five in there. And you have, I think you have great protection for all of those guys because they're making contact. One is going to be a contact hitter and one's going to be a power hitter. So I'm with you. I think it should go Trout, then Otani. I think that's the best way to approach our lineup with those two great hitters. One more thing to consider, and it just came to me, is the turnaround time for Otani to go from the mound to being the next batter up. And if you start the game out with one, two, and then Otani at three, then later on when Mike Trout is at the bat, and perhaps there's two outs or something, you know that Trout is not going to cause a quick inning. You know that the one and two in front of Otani are going to take pitches, give Otani a chance to rest on the bench before he has to come out again and pitch. So that way he's not running off the field and, and switching, you know, his helmet for his hat and coming back out there to pitch and vice versa. Right. So that way you give, you put somebody in front of Otani to take a couple pitches and make it so, so it's not such a quick inning for him to have to switch roles that quickly, because we've seen that a few times where he comes out of, uh, of pitching and then the inning is over super quick and he's just had a taxing inning pitching and then he's got to go right back out again. And so, to have somebody in front of him who can take some pitches and and make the inning a little bit longer, like a trout, and then whoever might be number one, I think would be a wise decision too, because that way you're either giving him a rest before the third out, or he comes back up in that inning and and hits, and then whatever happens, happens there. But I think that having trout in front of him only expands the time for him to rest a little bit more on the bench between pitching and hitting. Tony, this weekend, the Angels are playing the Astros, and we were hopeful that this would actually be one of those series that were battling for first and second place. The beginning (laughs) of the year kind of looked like that, right? And then then we didn't come through on our part. And so, unfortunately, it's one of those games that we've been playing the last few years where they're really good and we're not so good. (laughs) But I still think, I still think there are some players that are interesting to watch this weekend. And so... I'm going to start and talk about the player I'm watching. And then why don't you tell us who you're watching? Sure. And I'm going to be a broken record and I'm going to talk about Shohei Otani. And I'm watching him this weekend simply because one, he's, he's going to be pitching and, and I can't wait to see him pitch against really great teams. And he said something a few days ago when he pitched against Alec Manoa against the Blue Jays, he said like, 
that was tough. Like you, you got to be perfect when you're pitching against those guys. But I think yeah. that that's a good mindset for him to be in because yeah, dominate the, the Tigers and dominate the Orioles or dominate the whoever, right? The Royals. But when he goes out there and he dominates a really good team, I think that that's just an exclamation point to his talent and to his ability. And so I, I would love to see him dominate this team, but I would also mm-hmm. love to see him get a whole lot of offense this weekend. And here's why, Johnny. I want him to build his MVP resume. And I also want to see him build his Cy Young resume (laughs) because I know Justin Verlander is the leader there. And I know that there are some other pitchers that have pitched really, really well, but I would love to see Shohei. In fact, I'd love to see him get Cy Young over MVP just simply Mm. because he got MVP before. And I want to see him get that Cy Young. And so I think in order for him to do that, he's got to get a win in his last few starts. He's got to get a win probably in each of those starts just so that people can, their eyes can be on him, right? He's got Mm -hmm. 11 wins. If he gets to 14, 15 wins, I think it'll be really hard to ignore him for MVP, but Mm -hmm. I also think it'll be really, really hard to ignore him for Cy Young. Now, Justin Verlander is the sentimental favorite because he's come back and he's pitched extremely well. And he, if he gets it, rightly so, so deserved, right? But I would love to see Shohei just stack up on the stats this weekend as a pitcher and as a hitter, and then make it really, really tough for fans to say, oh, clear, it's Aaron Judge MVP, or oh, it's clear, (laughs) it's Justin Verlander. I want them to go, "Uh, I don't know, man. Like, you know, yeah, Judge has got 50-plus home runs, but when is he coming out to pitch? When is he coming out to to, to go seven, right? Or I know Verlander's having a great season, but, man, Shohei just has dominated in the last four starts, including against the Astros. So yeah. my eyes are on Shohei this weekend, and I want to see him pad the stats. I want to see him pitch really well. I want to see him get a few home runs this weekend. It'd be awesome to see at the end of this weekend him being somebody that people are talking about, like, oh, he's got to be the player of the week because he's already off to a great start. Right. Uh, I'm actually going to be watching your boy, your favorite, Reed Detmers this weekend. And the reason why is because I want to see how he handles the Astros. And not just this weekend, but moving forward. Because Reed Detmers is going to be part of this team, this Angels team, for a long time. He's going to be somebody in this rotation that we constantly depend on for years to come. And honestly, Mike, the, the rivalry with the Astros isn't going anywhere in terms of the Astros are going to be good next season and probably after that and the year after that. They are they have developed so well. And even with losing Correa and Springer and, and those guys, they are just finding a way to win because they have developed so well, uh, their players that are coming up. They're able to trade somebody that everybody was high on, like like Jose Siri, you know, <laughs> and trade him away and and be just fine with like Kyle Tucker and, and those guys. And then you got arms like Framber Valdez and, and uh, Christian Javier. And of course, Justin Verlander, whose you know, contract is up at the end of this year, but I mean, he'll likely come back because they'll want him back. Right. So for me to watch Reed Detmers take on the Astros, I think is an important series for him and an important game for him because he did good against the Blue Jays and the Blue Jays are a tough team, but it wasn't one of his best outings, right? It wasn't a, right. Oh my gosh, but it was a good enough. I mean, it was scoreless <laughs> and the and, sure. and the game yeah. ended up being a shutout, but he didn't get very far into the game and it seems like he he had a little bit of trouble just with some hits and some runners on base. So I would like to see how Reed Detmers does against a tough Astros team, a team that we're going to be dealing with for years to come and who Reed Detmers is going to be facing for years to come as a member of the angels. Reed Detmers is somebody that we are going to have to come to rely on as an important piece of the rotation. So I am curious to see how his start goes this weekend. I think that he can do well. I would love to be impressed. I'd love to see him go seven innings, maybe two runs or less and, and rack up some of those strikeouts. Give me eight strikeouts. That's what I'm going with. Seven innings, two runs or less eight K's baby. That's what I'm expecting from Reed Detmers. 
Well, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen every day. And now for your second listen, go check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022. It's football season, and we've got an eight-episode extravaganza. That's a fun word to say. For you to get ready for the NFL season, the local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into the one ultimate NFL preview show. You can search for the ultimate pro uh, pro football preview show on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, you're going to want to follow us this weekend because it will be Mailbag Monday. So get in our mentions on Twitter at Locked On Angels. Of course, you can also DM us or comment at Super Halo Bros. And Mike, where else can our folks reach us? They can certainly reach us right here yeah give us a call we would love to hear your the sultry sounds of your voice 714-409-6396 you can call us and you can vent you can call us and ask questions you can call us and tell us where you would put fletch in the lineup or how you would bat trout and otani or maybe we're just completely off and completely ridiculous and then you can actually straighten us out so give us a call (laughs) on our voice line you can check it out in our description Yes, the voicemail line will be in the episode description below. And we hope you have a great weekend. Let's get a series win against the Astros. Enjoy that cowboy hat if you're going out to Angel Stadium. And until Monday, uh, we hope you have a great Labor Day weekend as well. I forgot about the holiday, Mike. That's great news. But we'll still be here on Monday. So if you're uh, cooking it up and grilling it up, we'll be here for you. So make sure you tune in to Lockdown Angels on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. And we'll see you right back here for more Locked on Angels.